What's up, fish tank people? Dawson's Fish Tanks bringing to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So we're in the middle of the small tank series, folks, and I gotta tell you, I'm having a riot with it. Last week, we set up a five gallon and had a pretty good time. If you haven't checked that video out, please click the links around here because there's some good advice at the beginning of that, talking about small tanks in general. Today, we're going twice as big. We're rolling into a 10 gallon. Oh, it's the 10. So folks, can you tell I'm excited to bring it to you today with a 10 gallon. I have to share, I believe the 10 gallon was actually the first tank that I ever had on my own. It had dark green gravel, it had a scuba diver, and of course, a no fishing sign. This is also the tank where my beloved goldfish named Dabloon lived. Uh, Dabloon is a golden coin from a sunken treasure ship. I don't know, my dad named the fish. Speaking of my dad, I remember holding the door for my dad as he picked up and carried the entire 10 gallon tank out to the garage and into the mud sink where he would do 100% water change, scrubbing out the gravel and then putting it back in and putting Dabloon back in. No wonder Dabloon ended up dying a premature death. Legend has it, according to my dad, that I was completely crushed when this goldfish died, and I've seen the way that my daughter Maya reacted when her betta fish died, so I can tell you, I probably was pretty torn up. So the 10 gallon, folks, this is how they get you, folks. This is where the multi-tank-itis starts. Yes, I can recall being at the Pet Supplies Plus. I'm wearing the Pet Supplies Plus green shirt. Um, the Pet Supplies Plus back in Finley, Ohio, and I remember looking at the five gallon tank, and the five gallon tank was like $12.99. I remember looking at a 10 gallon tank. 10 gallon tank was only $1.99. And I was like, Psh, no brainer. Gotta get the 10 gallon, right? It's brilliant marketing. And uh, I rolled to the front and I started putting everything in that I needed. And I was like, wait a minute. I got the gravel, I got the filter. I didn't even have money for the lights. And I was like, this is way more money than I was looking to spend. So the 10 gallon is how they get you. I'm rolling with the 10 gallon today. So I am loving the 10 gallon, obviously double the capacity of a five gallon, but that's a bit of caution though, because when these kids get a 10 gallon instead of a five gallon, I think I've got a whole bunch more room. It's not that big of a tank, but nonetheless it is bigger. It's got a nice a open top for the gas exchange versus how tall it is. So there's good gas exchange going on there. And uh, yeah, I remember staring at a kid named David Brindle's uh, 10 gallon tank had blue gravel in it and a little box filter in the corner and a couple miscellaneous tetras of being 14 years old and going, I gotta have one of those. That was the start of it, folks, it got bad. Now, you will know both in this video and in last week's video, I mentioned dirting a tank, and this is for a reason. You have significantly less number of species you can keep without good substrate. So while I'm rolling no dirt here today, and I have no good substrate, let it be said, if you want good plant growth, you wanna grow a variety of species, you need good substrate. We're gonna roll with just plain gravel here, but I reserve the right to actually add a touch of premium substrate depending upon which way I feel like we're going with this 10 gallon. Let's roll outside and set up the tent. All right, so we've got our little 10 gallon set up here. We've got it uh, sitting on cinder block stands and a piece of wood out here. Again, a gallon of water weighs a little over eight pounds, so you're looking at 80 pounds plus I'm about to put a ridiculous amount of rock in here, so it's probably gonna be well north of 100 pounds. So with this tank, I wanna do something fun. I wanna do something I've never really done before in any aquarium, and that is I wanna come above the rim with the rocks. No, this is entirely uh, inspired by my uh, massive handed man crush, my man Kevin Kelly of the uh, Brooklyn Hardscapers, as well as Oliver Cannot. I see these guys constantly uh, pushing themselves and doing crazy stuff. Look, it might look sweet. It might look like 10 gallons of hot trash, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Uh, I've been inspired. I've got a ton of rocks of this style. These are the same rocks that I do use in my 220. So I'm going to take this uh, above the rim today with a ridiculous amount of rocks. I'm also going to start with regular old uh, cheap, again 50 pound bag is 10 bucks, pool filter sand in the bottom of this. Alright, so step one is add the substrate. I'm adding pool filter sand in here. If you wanted to add some sort of root tabs, you could do that now. You could do that later. Some people use Osmocot. I'm not a big fan of it. It's better than nothing. But uh, this is just pool filter sand that I've got around. It's got a little bit of mixed uh, other gravel in, that's fine. This is just gonna be a very, very basic layer. Now I'm gonna use really, really, really ridiculous rocks in here. I'm only gonna put a little bit of gravel in the front just to get it started. I have to put sound down something to uh, make sure that these rocks don't bust through the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this piece of wood now obviously wood and water floats once you see this rock you'll understand what i'm trying to do 
So I'm gonna build it up now. I have a vision for this tank and we'll see if we can complete it or not. Where I want this tank to start really high up and then come down like this. So I'm just gonna smooth this gravel out. Always gets real when you put the gravel in. I'm gonna smooth this out. I'm not gonna use a ton out of the gate. I can add more later, but I do have to get some in here now while it's easy to do. Now it's time to add some huge rocks. How about this rock right here? Now this is a rock that I collected. If I told you where I got it from, I'd have to kill you. But uh, these are some of my favorite rocks, the ones I use in my 220. I've used this rock from this source. I haven't actually tested these rocks, but I know they're working in my 220 and not killing anything. So I'm good with it. Note, the look of this rock now is totally different when it's wet. But I put the piece of wood down, so now I'm gonna take this rock and I'm gonna set it in here. Almost as big as the tank front to back. Now that's a little overpowering in here, but I'm gonna do some things to kind of soften it. I'm sturdy up the steam a little bit here before we get too crazy. There we go. So I've got this huge rock in here. And now I'm going to try to add one of these big monster rocks. Now, I love this rock. It's ginormous. It's too big. Could look like hot trash. Uh, but it could turn out sweet. And I'm willing to risk it here. I'm going to try it out, see how it goes. And I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to be above the rim, above the water line. Now, you'll notice uh, I'm trying to go an angle down this way. So I need to do something to soften something here, a little smaller rock. I need to get something underneath here. But i got to make it look natural. So I'm going to use this right here. And this rock kind of blends with that. And it's gonna take a little finagling to get it in there. That kid crying in the background is my neighbor buddy Leo. He's actually a big fan of the koi, so. Uh, and this is a little, uh, a little rough, but then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just mess with it a little bit in the front here. Try to create a step down. And I've got tons and tons and tons of options on these rocks, so it's not like this is a permanent thing. I'm also not staring at it from the same angle that you guys are, so it's a little uh, more difficult to kind of bounce in and out of it here. But I'm going to try to go here. And uh, I kind of like that. That's coming. Now, the hard part here is that this is obviously not natural looking at all, like that, that gap right there. But I can fix that with smaller rocks. So we'll see uh, how this is going to go. I might try it just straight down. Yeah. See how that looks. See, that's a little, little unnatural. I want to get this thing up, so I might have to use. Well, I'm not really sure because you got to get the angle of the big rock just right. So I don't know. I like that it's coming up over the front here. Uh, I need to get it just sitting just like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck plants in here so you won't actually see this. But I do like the angle of this coming down here like that. I like the way that that's taking the eye. This piece doesn't belong here. So that's not it. That could be it. That's getting warmer. We're getting warmer, folks. All right, so that's, that's getting a little warmer now. I got to tighten this up in through here. Now, I don't like being directly on in front of the glass with this rock. It's a little too close. But I'm going to take this over here. I might mess around. Eh. It's all about trying and experimenting. I might come out and look at this later tonight and say that's not it at all and redo the whole thing. So I do like the, uh, the angle that this rock gives me, though. I like the, the small, small size. And the way it comes down just an inch off of that. There we go. So, I've got that situated in there. And now I need to look at it. Eh. So the question becomes with this is how can I go and, and soften all this to make it look like a scene? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it down so you guys can see what it looks like wet. Because these rocks don't have as much character until you get them wet. You can see the more orange coming through there. So that'll look pretty tight, if I do say so myself. And again, it's what you like, you know? Like, I, this is the way I, I think it looks all right. Now, the top part's not gonna be wet. That's gonna be a little different. But, um, yeah, this will be all right. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a bunch of plants and see if I can make it work, because I can soften everything with the plants throughout. So, that's the initial start. I also don't like, actually, the light uh, substrate versus the contrast with this. It's lighter, so what I'm gonna do 
is I'm gonna take a ton of little, I did this in last week's video too, I'm gonna take a ton of little small uh, chips of this and soften it all up, but I'm gonna go grab the plants and see what we can do here. All right, so now comes the fun part. We add the plants, uh, see what this tank needs. I did take a couple minutes away, to step away from it to really like kind of say, all right, come back and see what we got to do. So uh, all these are essentially bulletproof plants. You can click the link. They are all in my bulletproof plants video, but you can check that video out. Start with Elodea anacris, anacris Elodea, whatever it is. And um, this is super duper bulletproof. Like I see it floating. It's invasive and illegal in a couple of states, but uh, it's fast growing, hardy, uh, kind of doesn't, I mean, would like good substrate, but doesn't really care. So I'm gonna use some of this first. Uh, I've got some also, I've got some wonderful Java ferns, regular old Java fern. This is a uh, super duper hardy species. I've got some Anubias, you'll recall, I put the kibosh on the Anubias. I did not use the Anubias in uh, last week in the five gallons. So I'm gonna try to work it in here perhaps. And then I've got the always fun hornwort. And I've got uh, this Anubias gigantia. Now this is called gigantia, this is actually tiny. Uh, this is a rhizome I've just been regrowing. So we'll see if we can work this in. This can actually come up out of the water pretty nicely as well. And last but certainly not least, I've got some Suswasser Tang. I've never actually used this. Not sure if it's going to make the cut, but I am going to roll with that. So I've got these. Now you'll notice I did not use all the substrate right out of the gate. I intentionally left some of it behind. Uh, that's on purpose because I want to see kind of where the scape is going. We'll start over here. And... Uh, you know, one the I know that while it's, that's in there like that right now, uh, I'm gonna fill it up with water. Those will hopefully rise. They'll grow up tall. They'll come all over the place. That'll be good. I want to make a note here too. I am gonna use an LED on top. This is uh, left over from uh, the JBJ Scapers tank. So this is gonna get mounted above. I'm showing it down here. It's actually gonna be mounted higher up. Uh, ultimately, when I'm done over this whole thing. So. Not a whole lot of light, but these are all pretty low light plants, really. So I'm going to get the anacris down in here. Let me show y'all. Bury that in there. And then when I fill it, I can obviously rinse some of that off. But we'll, we'll fill that in with that. And then I want to take... Uh, this tank is screaming java fern for me right in this little crack right here so i'm going to take some of this java fern uh, java fern likes to be tied ideally with java fern you want to spread it out uh, the more it's spread kashimano told me okay his translator told me in 2008 the more you cut java fern the more it grows but uh this this to me belongs right in through here so i'm gonna wedge this here kind of softening this edge And again, not heavy root feeders, doesn't matter. Uh, rolling with all super duper easy plants uh, in here. And that's coming there. It's all right. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with this gap too much, though. I really want to keep that more flush against the bottom one. So you got to work with this here. Notice this is all being done without water. No water in here. I am looking forward to seeing it with water because everything will stand up, but. For now, no water. There we go. A little better. Ah, pull this in, pull this up. There. It's coming. Yeah, I don't like the way that rock sits. I do like the lip on it, so I can probably soften that with Java moss, or we'll just see what it uh, what looks like with some Java fern in there. Some more down here. Notice I got black thread. We also use the wire. It's actually touching the glass, which I'm not a fan of, but yeah, that'll, that'll go. Spread that out. See what it looks like. Reserve the right to come back and make adjustments. You know, but you just gotta kind of get it in there. You don't know what's gonna work until you know you know what's not working as well. So oh, there we go. That's getting there. I got that pulled in there. I really should use some uh, Java Fern Wendell of it. would actually pop a little better, but I've got uh, something that's got a little funkiness to it. This is the Bulbitis Hudalati right here. Love me this stuff. And uh, I'm gonna, this stuff gets huge. I'm gonna stick it in the cracks down here. Underneath this big boy. 
for now. Ooh, and this rock is having trouble staying up. And then obviously I want to make sure that this giant rock up on top here is uh, you know, fully secured. Seems all right there. And then down and through here, we'll get a better angle on this for you guys. All right, now I am holding the camera straight on, sitting directly in front of it, and I want to show what I'm seeing here and where this needs to go. All right, I like the curve coming out of here. I think that'll be really accented with the light coming down. That'll really give me a nice shadow over here. This will stand up. That will hopefully stand. It'll do. It'll. It'll ultimately grow towards the light, which will be good. Uh, this is fine right here. And then I've got to work in something here. So I had to get down real low uh, next to it to really see what's going on. I want to do. I'm going to do some softening with some smaller, like uh, call them like shooter marble size, shooter McGavin, shooter marble size uh, rocks. You know, power ball size, bouncy ball size, golf ball size, little stuff all in through there. So that's all going to happen. Uh, and then I want to get something in here, so I'm looking at this going, okay, could that go out the side there to fill some of that negative space over there? Now, I don't want it to be too overpowering with the negative space, but I think like this piece of Java Fern uh, will work in through there. I've also got some hornwort, not really sure how to use it, but I know uh, it might be good. It, it gets so big so fast, but uh, it'll absorb all the excess nutrients or whatever and will give me a higher plant mass quickly in this tank so it's certainly an option um, the anubius i have not ruled out yet but i haven't really thought of a spot i might kind of accent the front with it a little bit give you a little bit of tension a little bit of contrast uh in the front there and then maybe one off the back i kind of like the round i'm not sure if i'll go anubius or i'll go java fern out the back there and then i could also do some uh tucked up in there and that's probably where we're gonna go but i wanted to sit down in front of it and take a minute and just say, all right, what does it need? Where are we going? That kind of thing. It needs some more softening over here with some different rocks as well. And I'm not nuts about the color of the pool filter sand, but we'll get it going. Spray it down. And what you're going to do If you get any water on the front and it disrupts, you want to use the sham wow. It's like a chamois, it's like a sponge. You could use it in your car, your house, your boat, your dog. And you could just uh, wipe it all down in the front here. If you're into that sort of thing. So we'll get that wiped off there. And then we'll get this set up. All right, so now it's a little uh, little wet. Now we're gonna take and we're gonna go, okay, we talked about it, now we gotta execute. We gotta take this, shove this down in here. And again, you know, I've got this big obnoxious piece coming out the top. You don't need that, you know? You could, I could get away without that, it would still be all right. And again, these are all super duper easy beginner plants, I mean, nothing, Nothing too hard, nothing too fancy. Java fern in there. Gonna pull that around. Got the Java fern in there. Got the LED is still not standing up, but that's all right. And then I've got um, some of this Anubius. Now the Anubius I think is gonna go in the front right here. So. I like the uh, contrast of the round. And in newbies, you always want to keep the rides on above the substrate. I, I say that every video, but. And then I'm going to try out this Anubius up here. And I really wanted to do something kind of, kind of freaky up here on top with like a little moss or what have you, but. I don't know, I'm not decided kind of where I'm going with that yet. So yeah, well, eh, I'm not nuts about the Anubius in the front there. I don't know. 
it's a little too centered for my liking. What I can do is I can come in later and get it over a little bit. Let's see what we can do here. That's a tweezers operation. So. But what I'm gonna do, since this is only a 10, I'm gonna fill it up. Because I wanna see how this thing looks wet. And I wanna see what the plants stand up and where they go make adjustments some other things to consider I could do the this wasser tang up in through here soften that up not nuts on the Anubias in here right now yeah I'm gonna take a break fill this sucker up with a little bit of water actually you know what first I'm gonna add some more softening rocks to this. Show you guys just how big of a junkie I am here. This is normal behavior, right? These are the rocks. This one right here. Ah, love it. Sadly, some of these need to be broken. The old skanky What's Up Fish Tank People t-shirt. Take the rocks that I'm not going to use because these don't have enough character for what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to take these so I don't smash my camera. Or have something fly up and bust my camera. That would suck. There we go. And this is the size we're looking for right here. These are the golden ones. I like that one too, that feels nice. Yeah, so these work. Alright, so I've temporarily added this light. Now, it's actually on the uh, the lid of a scaper's tank. I'm going to move it. The light's going to move up there, but it makes the shot a little bit better for you guys. So now it's time to add the softening rocks, these guys or what have you. And, um, I like to use the ones with the character. Now I can stick, that's a nice little, that's a nice drop right there because I can stick something down in there later. So I like the way that that ended up falling. Worked out pretty well. On that side, the anacris comes up, that'll be okay. Right down here, Anubis is out. You're out Anubis, you're gone. Why I'm having so much trouble working the Anubias in. Got these wet. And then uh, I gotta do something in through here. Eh, maybe. Ah, too big. Yeah, that can work. You kinda take your eye that way with it. Also got this piece. And I like the, the down angle with that. So I'm gonna stick with that. And out here. I don't know, I kinda like this edge we've got forming here, so I might just leave it. But uh, I've debated about bringing it out more. Maybe extend it out that way. Not really sure. I may just leave it open space right there. Now the part that everybody neglects to do.
And I don't know, I might have I actually might have liked that better without them. I'm gonna undo that. Now we still need to do something in there. Maybe some small bobitis. Bobitis will get huge, but something's something's gotta go in there to soften it, but we'll get there. I'm gonna fill this up with water though. Nice thing about no dirt. And use a hose. Now I'm filling too fast. This is gonna make a cloudy mess. But the poop other sand actually isn't gonna be that bad. Now I didn't rinse these rocks, so this might be a rinse and repeat. But we'll see what it looks like wet. You can always do another water change. I actually uh, like the little island kind of thing we got going. And we're going to rinse and repeat this, drain it. It's going to be cloudy, I'm going to let it settle, siphon it all out, do it again. No dechlor at this point, these plants can all handle no dechlorination, in my humble opinion. I got to get away from it creatively just to like you know, look at it, see what it needs, what it doesn't. I've spent too much time, you know, all up on top of it instead of back from it. So I'm gonna let it sit, uh, let it settle out, see what I wanna do, and go from there. All right, so this is after a fill up, and I have not drained it at all, so there's still a lot of stuff, a lot of dust or what have you on there. But um, I like where it's going. I moved the light up so you could see kind of the shadow that I'm going for with that big rock. I need to actually straighten that light out a little bit. Whatever, you get this is the idea. This is the this is the creative part. You gotta like stop and say, all right, where's this going? Where's it not going? So I'm gonna roll like this. So this is the Anubius Gigantia. It gets Gigantia. It's got those awesome trident leaves on it. Uh, it's not, it's a little more sensitive of Anubius, but I'm definitely gonna try it out. Just because I love the way it'll it'll come out. It'll stick with kind of the triangle theme that I've got going on here. So I'm gonna plant that down in there. Oh best as I can all right so I like the way this is going here um, I put the light higher up because I think that gives you more perspective of what I'm trying to achieve with the rock up out of the water I like the way that it comes down from here down to a ledge down to here I'm enjoying that that's just in there floating temporarily uh, I do want to work on this some more though so I'm gonna drain the water down this water is really cloudy uh, anyway there is no filter on at this point because I'm just in and out of it in and out of it and I'm having a good time with it. But uh, I am gonna take the water level down and then I'm gonna add some Gigantia Anubius probably to this corner over here, which I think will come up and pop off real nice. I've also got another smaller piece of Gigantia already in there, but it's hard. Dexterity is difficult uh, with having the water in the tank. And it's something I did for years uh, until I started learning just to do it without the water. So it is a pain to drain the water, but it makes everything easier uh, downhill. So we're going to go ahead and drain the water. I would have gone down more, but it is what it is. So take this, found them, and uh, just wedge this Gigantia down in here. One of my, probably my favorite Anubius. broke that off. If you guys see this, I actually pushed too hard and broke it. Now luckily I've still got the roots on there. So I'm actually gonna take this. This will still grow just fine, but I pushed it down. That's no bueno, but it happens. So this plant will be fine. Get it down in there. couple little pieces
to make sure it stays. That Gigantia is in there. Leaf's a little beat up. That'll be fine. So that's going on in there. And then I've got another Gigantia over here. It's getting small. This is going to get big though, which I think will look really hot coming out of there larger. I don't I don't see it being an issue when it gets big. I do like the small size in the front there. And then now we got to work got work to do within here. And those are going in there. I don't like that on the glass, but we'll make do. I like this over here. Now this is Wasser tang. Really, I when I keep it in the the greenhouse tanks, I just kind of set it along the bottom, and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to accent here, tucking it in, and I'm going to. I'm actually going to break this in two. This is cool stuff. Got this from my man Rob at Flip Aquatics. It's a weird little plant. And don't have very good uh, angle at it. That's coming. I like that. Now we go back to stair time. And I've got an idea for the uh, end of this when the water's filled back up. I don't like the way that's angling there though. I'm gonna fix that. Swasser tang is doing good down in there. I like the Gigantia in there. I kind of want to bring something out the back here, but I haven't decided yet. I like the negative space, though. I think the negative space is working for us. But uh, it's a 10 gallon, one of the beauty of 10 gallons. You can drain it and fill it easy. So I'm going to fill it back up. All right, a couple things to point out here. I did take some creative time away. Uh, I added, and uh, this is an AquaClear 20 over there on that end. I don't know, that's probably not going to stay there. But no, when you see all these fancy aquascapes or whatever that people do for these contests, like they do have filters, they just take them off for the photos. I'm putting that on there because I needed some water flow and needed to get moving. It's actually unplugged right now because I just added the light. So I've got this light on here. Light's not the best, but these are all super duper low light plants. So I'm not too concerned about the light with these plants the plants will adjust and i mean the java fern java, uh, java fern elodea uh, this this wasser tang all this stuff is like super duper uh relatively low light stuff but um there's still some work to be done in here that just needs softening and when i say softening i mean adding more plants uh getting it more green getting it more lush and i've got this wonderful moss right here that I'm gonna add to it. So now we got all low tech stuff, super easy. We got the Java Fern, we got the uh, Java Fern, we got the Java Moss, we got the Elodea, we got the Gigantia, which is a little bit more finicky in the Siswasser tank. So all super easy stuff. And now I'm just gonna stick this in all the cracks, baby. It's the 10 Crack Commandments, oh, wow. uh, It's the 10 uh, Crack Commandments. Stick all the moss. Wedge it, I'm just gonna finger stuff it. The moss just does what it wants, that's the nice part about it. It'll fill in. Those of you new to Java moss, it might like kind of melt back on you for a second, but it'll come back. Just let it adjust. The other part of it is once you put Java moss in your tank. It's never coming out, but whatever. This is a low-tech, simple tank, and that'll all come back out. I'd rather get it wedged in there good out of the gate. Notice no fish in here just yet, none. Let it sit, let it run. The plants are going to help cycle it, though. I always say wait two weeks to add fish. You're just better off that way. You don't want your kids crying. I don't know if that's the right move, putting the uh, Java fern or excuse me, Java Moss 
in with the Siswasser tang. I don't know if they'll compete or what will happen because I really want the Siswasser tang to take over in the front more than the moss, but we'll see. Get this out of here. Yeah. A little softer. And here's how we're looking after a couple of days of playing in and out of this tank. I do like how it's going here with the negative space. I do think this is working. I know what you're asking yourself. You're saying, Dusty, why don't you take the rim off of that tank? Look, I got plenty of broken skank tanks around the greenhouse. I can practice taking the rim off before I do this. I would like to do that. But uh, at this time, I'm not taking it off my first run here. I also think you're wondering, where's the filter? Well, there's no filter on here at this time. Uh, I have been running that AquaClear 20, but I wanted to show you guys the look without it. I may put a canister filter on, but the reality of it is I'm going to let this sit uh, for a week or two without and just kind of do a little water change. I may add an air stone. You're probably asking yourself, what's up with the fish? Creatively, I'm not there yet. I'm still in rocks and plants mode. I got to figure out what the best looking fish would be. How about one fat looking betta fish in here? I don't know. So, so do me a favor. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. There's a button down to the right somewhere you can click. I am going to be doing an update on both the no maintenance tank, uh, show a little clip of the five gallon, and we're moving into a 15 gallon next week. I'm having a good time in the small tank series. Everybody have a fabulous freaking week and tank on. Later. It's the 10th.